Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartman from graphicinmotion.com and in this tutorial I will show you how to customize my 3D Particles logo build and break After Effects template. If you already purchased this template through VideoHive then I really want to thank you for your support, I really appreciate it. And if you didn't buy it yet then I hope that this customization tutorial can help you make a decision whether this template is worth its money. So let's open up the project. Therefore I go to File and then I choose Open Project. Inside the 3D Particles Logo Build and Break folder you will find two different After Effects projects. As you can see in the file names these have different resolutions. So the first project here is in the full HD resolution and the second one is in an Ultra HD 4K resolution. So choose whatever resolution you want to use. Be aware that the Ultra HD version of course takes quite a bit longer to render than the full HD version. In my case I will use the full HD version for this tutorial but the customization process is exactly the same in both versions. So let's choose this project file and let's click open. If you use an After Effects version that is higher than After Effects CS5 you will get this information that this project must be converted from version 10 which is actually After Effects CS5 and this is the version which the project was originally created with. So if you work with CS6 or CC version then you have to convert it. This is no error, just click OK and After Effects will convert the project automatically. Then you may encounter this information and this is more or less the same with Trap Code Particular. Depending on which version of Trap Code Particular you are using, After Effects may have to upgrade the project file. So you can also just click OK and After Effects will convert the project to your Trap Code Particular version. Inside the project we have a few compositions already open. We have the logo composition, the subtitle composition, the particle texture composition and the render composition. These are all the compositions that you will need throughout this customization process. If these compositions are not already open then you can find them in your project panel and you can open them up by double clicking on the compositions. So the first step of the customization process is to enter a logo. Therefore we go to the logo composition and then I choose File and I select Import File to import one of my logos. In my case I will take this Illustrator file and click Import. Now I can take my logo file and drag it on top of my placeholder here and I can disable or delete the text layer here. Now I want to scale my logo a little bit better so I press S and let's see, scale it down a bit. And if I want to check the final position of my animation, you can come to your render composition and then make sure that the time indicator is around 8 seconds. Now we can take a look how this will look when the logo is revealed. And actually I think it can be a little bit bigger, so I go back to my logo composition and I change the scaling to maybe 45%. And I always make sure that my logo is in the middle of this composition. Now let's get back to the render comp take a look here and I think that this is a little better. Now the next step is to customize the subtitle. To change the subtitle enter the subtitle composition. You see that inside the subtitle composition we have the logo layer which is only a guide layer here and we have a text layer. You can edit the title on this text layer so double click this text layer now you can type in whatever you want you can choose whatever font you want. In my case as an example I used the Futura font and this is actually part of the type kit. So if you have a Creative Cloud subscription you can get this font through Typekit Pro. Now I do not want to change the text actually, I just want to change the position and the size of this subtitle. So first of all I will make it a little bit smaller so that it is not bigger than my logo and now I will simply select the layer and with my arrow keys I will position it a little bit better. Let's say something like this. Let's take a look here and I think that this is nice. Now I can come into my render composition and again check the final result around 8 seconds and I'm pretty happy with this final layout. The next option that you have is we can choose one of the particle textures. If I take a look at around 3 seconds maybe when my logo is forming you see that right now the cube particles are selected. If I now enter my particle texture composition I'll just quickly change back to my selection tool and I bring in my cursor. You see that we have a bunch of different options here. Actually there are 10 different particles available. Let's take a look at them quickly. 
So first of all, we have one atom here. I can change the resolution to full. Then we have another one here, some kind of a scientific particle. Then we have a cone. We have a cube. We have a donut, a gear, a pyramid, a sphere, a star, and a triangle ball. Make sure that you always only activate one of these layers. So if you want to use, for example, let's say the donut, then choose the donut and make sure that this is the only one turned on with this eye switch here. Now we can move on to our render composition and we can take a look maybe around two or three seconds during the build up and you will see now all these particles are looking like donuts. If I take another one, let's go back to the particles here and let's choose maybe the star for now. Go back to the random composition and you will see everything will update immediately and you have the new sprite available. To customize this template even further, you can select the setup layer inside the render composition. And in the effect controls panel, you see that we have a bunch of different options here. First of all, you can change the particle size. The standard setting here is 15. If I increase this maybe, let's say to 25, you will see that the particles, of course, get bigger. So let's take a look how this looks when the particle is building up. And you see now all these particles are big. Actually, I think they're a little bit too big in my case. So I will reduce this again to 15. I could also go a little bit smaller, maybe to 10. So this really also depends how big or how thin your logo is. You can change the particle size to match the lines or the shapes of your logo. I will set this back to the standard value of 15 for now. The next option that you have got here, I will make this a little bit bigger that we can see this, is a so-called particle shadow led opacity. I will zoom in here a little bit and change the resolution to full for a moment to make this a little bit more obvious. The shadow led opacity actually controls the shadows within these particles. So if I set the opacity here to a higher value, let's set this to about 50 for now to make it really obvious. Now After Effects will recalculate this frame and you will see, take a look right here. Now everything, yeah, it's really, of course, way too much and the shadow leads are now are very strong. So the standard setting here is five. Maybe if you want to have a little bit darker shadows, then you could also set it to seven or something like this. Don't go too high on these values. And if you're working with really thin particles like the, the atoms here, for example, I will activate this for a moment and go back to my render composition. And in this case, it makes sense to even reduce the particle shadow led opacity because these thin small particles would not create uh, these dark shadows here. So I would set this to about three maybe in this case. And I think that this looks a little bit more natural. Okay, now let's go back and change this back to our star shape here. And let's go back to the render comp, select our setup layer and change this back to five. And now let's move on with the next option. The next option is the subtitle color. If we move our time indicator to around eight seconds when everything is revealed, now I can change the color of my subtitle. To change the color of the subtitle, you can come in here and specify a color. You could of course also use the eyedropper tool and take a color from your logo. In my case, I just will leave this gray color here. The next option that you have is the flare opacity. Before I show you the flare opacity, I just want to show you how to change the background color because then the flare will be a little bit more obvious. Let's change the background color here from this bright uh, gray to some kind of a dark gray tone. Let's say I want to create a darker version of this intro, maybe something like that. And now we also see that the flare becomes a little bit more visible. So I will zoom out here for a moment, change the resolution to half. And now I can change the flare opacity. Maybe you do not want to have any flare in your animation, then you can simply set this to zero and the flare will be gone. If you want it to be a little bit stronger, then you can of course set it to 100. You can of course also change the flare color by clicking in here and specifying a color or taking the eyedropper tool to maybe take over one of the colors in your logo. So in my case, I could make this a little bit pinkish here. 
And if I take a look how this looks like, now my logo will be built from star particles in this dark environment. Okay, so this is it with the customization for this template. If you want to add an audio track, you can of course do so. Uh, to import an audio track, you have to go to File and again choose File Import. So just import the audio track to your project and then drag it on the bottom of your render composition and then render out your animation. Okay, so this is it for this customization tutorial. I hope that you like this template. I hope that you can create some really awesome intro animations with it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me anytime through my video hive profile or also through my website, which is www.graphicinmotion.com. Thank you very much for watching and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.